Welcome to Make Workshop, where we check out tools, toys, and tech built for makers. Today, we're going to look at a desktop CNC mill. This is the Bantam Tools desktop CNC mill. Like the name implies, this is the CNC mill that fits on your desktop. As far as specs go, the working area of this machine is seven inches by nine inches by three and a half inches. And it can cut things like aluminum, brass, wood, plastics like Delrin and uh, other materials like that. The spindle is a 250 watt quarter horse spindle. As far as the physical construction of the mill itself goes, you have uh, an aluminum frame that is 5 8 inches thick, and then the, the shafts that everything rides on, the rods, are 20 millimeters thick. It's meant for cutting the softer metals like aluminum and brass. You're probably not going to be throwing a block of titanium in here, but who knows, maybe if you took it really easy, you could pull it off. The software on the machine is designed to be extremely user-friendly and simplified. It's, they're simplifying the approach to machining. Uh, if you've used something before like Universal G-Code Sender or Mach 3 or 4, the Mach series, you'll find that this is um, much, much, much more simplified. There aren't as many bells and whistles to click on. But it also makes things much more approachable for a beginner. The uh, software has several nice features, like the ability to preview the job in the stock and the machine placed on a preview of the machine itself. That's kind of nice. It's got built-in ability to generate toolpaths for things like SVGs. So if you were to design in um, Illustrator or something like that, you could bring it directly into the software and you don't have to generate CAM yourself. It can do that for you. It also has a built-in tool library that has all the feeds and speeds for the tools that you've purchased from uh, Bantam. Now, I got my machine extremely early, so my tool library was not filled out, but when you see aluminum being cut in this video, I'm using their recommended feeds and speeds. They just sent them to me by email, and you can see that they work. The built-in tool library is gonna be a very nice feature once it's fully fleshed out. Uh, they also have some templates that you can download into Fusion 360 that will show you different tool paths and how they work. They're still kind of fleshing those out as well. They showed me the templates for um, Delrin and other plastics, and they basically give you a feel for like what the different tool paths do and what feeds and speeds you should use for certain tooling that come with the machine. There are some aspects to their software that are going to generate a lot of comments, I think, and that is that they have a subscription model. You can pay an extra fee to get some extra features. Right now, those features include advanced probing on holes and things like that, uh, and advanced SVG handling, so you can do different types of cuts just by generating specific colors and shapes. and. Illustrator, as well as feed and speed override. Now, feed and speed override, in my personal opinion, should be uh, there by default, but I'm actually not opposed to uh, paying a little bit for some features that help you create toolpaths. For example, you know, there is no toolpath creation, there's no advanced toolpath creation in the other things like Mach or whatever that you pay for. Uh, you would end up having to buy software like Vectric. Aspire or VCar or, or something like that, or learn how to do CAM in Fusion 360. So I can understand paying for uh, some of the advanced features that generate CAM for you, and I'm eager to see what they come up with for that whole model. Personally, the built-in touch probing that comes with it by default, uh, I, I love that. It's just so nice to be able to throw a chunk of metal in there and have it automatically find the surfaces for you. It's not an unheard of uh, feature. You'll find that on a lot of machines, but it's just really well integrated into the machine and I liked it. Everything you see me cutting in this video, it's important to note, is with the base features. I did not show off any advanced or subscriber features in this video. In my explorations with the machine, I found that it worked as advertised. Um, I have a tendency with milling metal to kind of turn everything way, way, way down, you know, and be very timid and go slowly. Uh, but they kept giving me feeds and speeds 
that were recommended uh, that just chewed through the aluminum much more aggressively than I would have personally attempted at first, and the machine handled it just fine, as you can see in these results. <laughs> CNC machining is hard. Uh, even even like simpler stuff like this are just as hard as some of these more complicated looking ones. It's not like a like a modern day 3D printer where you drop in a file, select what spool of material you have, and choose your quality and hit go. It's a lot more complicated than that. But you can learn how to do it uh, thanks to a collection of books we've got in the maker shed right now at a reduced price. We've got the CNC bundle in the maker shed it is six books to help you learn how to do different cnc projects and learn skills for cnc routing and milling uh it's 34.95 for the bundle of six books that's you know learn how to design infusion jimmy deresta's tips and tricks book from the workshop uh using cnc for producing leather work i mean tons of great tips and tricks there's a link to that bundle down below and don't get too discouraged i'm actually not an expert even though i made something that looks as awesome as this i think i would fall more on the advanced side of a beginner uh, and so you could totally pick up these books learn what you're doing make stuff like this no problem i find this machine really interesting it fits in a very specific niche in the cnc uh, mill ecosystem that i i am excited to see filled um, I'm gonna parallel this a little bit to laser cutters. If you've watched laser cutters for the past few years, you know that uh, you can get a very cheap laser cutter that technically is the same power and capabilities as a more expensive one, uh, like a, a K40, for example. You can get one of those for pretty cheap and then you have to add all the bells and whistles yourself to make it easier and more usable, kind of like a Glowforge or um, uh, full spectrum lasers, Muse, or, or something like that. This is vaguely similar in that you could import a basic CNC mill for much cheaper that is the same foot, the, the same size. But then you're going to be stuck having to add all your own bells and whistles, like an enclosure and the e stop, and your software experience is not going to be as good. The price on this is comparable. Uh, you know, to something like a Glowforge or a Muse. And I think that's really interesting. I think it's, um, I think it's a market that, that makes sense. There are a lot of people willing to pay for that ease and reliability that don't want to tinker with a machine. People like, you know, maker spaces or even schools. I could see high schools and stuff using this. Um, and it, it makes sense to me. I like it. I, I would love to see all kinds of competition in this space, you know people competing with this machine as well. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I see this as a product fitting in the ecosystem. If you're gonna be doing major parts, you know, like engine parts or something like that, you're probably gonna move up to something beefier, more substantial, you know, heavier, uh, you know, a, a full-size vertical milling machine or something like that. But for prototyping containers, um, enclosures for your electronics, small sculptural items. Uh, this is absolutely capable. The Bantam Desktop CNC Mill is available uh, right now for $3,600. Go to bantamtools.com to learn more about the machine, their subscription services, and their other products. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the little notification bell so you can find out whenever we put out new videos about cool new tech, uh, community news, different interviews, and things like that. I'll see you next time.